Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit more work on the try. Today I'm going to do show how to flash the firmware on the driver board, the flight controller board, and also because I've got EU firmware on here, I need to flash EU firmware onto my X4R. Or I'm not sure if it is EU or not, so I'm just going to flash that as well. So I'll guide you through the process of doing that. All you all you really need for the controller board flash is a micro USB and for the flash of the X4R you need an FTDI cable which you've seen in my previous videos um, I'll dig that out somewhere, it's somewhere around here so I'll do a little screen capture at the same time as I'm actually videoing what I'm doing so you get both views of what's going on so I'll just set up here, hope you enjoy Right, so you should be able to see my screen now in the top right hand corner I'll place it. So, at the moment I've not got the control board plugged into the computer. I'm just going to show you a few things that you need to set up first. So, first of all you'll need to get Clean Flight, obviously, to program your board. I'll put these links in the description, so get your Clean Flight from Google. Then you need to also download TriFlight from GitHub. But at the moment it's version 0 0.5, there is a... Uh, 0.6 RC1 that's out, but well, I'm not going to use that, I'm just going to use this one for now. So just download that, and if you drop down here, we need the TriFly 0.5 SP Racing F3 Hex if you're using this particular control board that I'm using. Also, you might have to download the drivers for your PC to run this to be able to uh, communicate with the board. So you just go to this page here that I'll put in the link description and download for your appropriate format. The next thing you do is you open up Clean Flight again and you should see this screen. Don't click connect or anything in the top right. Click on firmware flasher. You want to load firmware local and navigate to where you downloaded where you downloaded your hex file. Click open you want to choose these options here, so no reboot, full chip arrays and a manual board 25600. So now what you need to do is you need to on the board hold down the boot button and plug in your USB and there you go, you see if it's a come on COM5 so it's automatically changed up here to COM5 and just click flash firmware and it'll flash, check and then tell you if you've flashed ok I'll leave this running in real time so you can see how long it actually takes we're on verify stage now It should be as easy as that. So I think the 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 only problem I had here was getting the drivers installed for the board. If you have a look on this welcome page here, it gives you a bit of information here about where to download them from. But I'll also click the link in. So now we're all okay. We'll try do a connect and see if we can get the quad showing up. Uh, the try showing up. Sorry. So we've got it here. We can see that when we move the quad, it all moves on the screen. Beautiful. So I'm not really sure what I'll do next. I might do the flash on the X4R. So you can obviously go through here and have a quick look through your configuration. But I think I'll come back to this once we've actually got everything set up and ready to ready to test. So yeah, you can have a quick look through. I'm sure there's a lot more videos on YouTube that show you this stuff in depth, like stuff here. Uh, if we've got one shot, obviously I have got one shot um, enabled on these ESCs. This is to do with uh, setting up the inputs and outputs. So if you're using um, SBUS like I will be doing, I'll need to go in here and select it. I'm not really sure which ones it is yet, but I think it's three. 
Right, so this is about two weeks after the first part of the video. I've had a lot of problems with this. It's taken me about 12 hours to work out these next couple of things I'm going to show you. Um, so basically, my old FTDI adapter was actually a, a fake, so I couldn't reprogram it, which you need to do for this next bit. So I got a, a real one off eBay. Um, cost about twice as much as the fake. Anyway. So you need this program called FTProg. If you open it, you go into hardware and invert RS232 signals, you'll see that these two are ticked. If you just program this one, I'll program it back to how it comes stock. And if you Unplug it, re-plug it back in. You'll see it's found it as a new device. Press the magnifying glass. Go back to your hardware again and just invert your signals. Like that. Click program. Program again. So it's finished. see this time that they're inverted there you go so the next thing you need to do is you need to get your, your little FTDI board and you need to just click the RX is this blue wire TX is this red wire and then this goes into a diode which the blocking end of the diode is facing the red then you plug that into your S port and then you want to just power up your receiver, but not yet. So next, you want to start up your updater program. And then you want to select the EU firmware, which is LBT in my case, which is the EU firmware. Click open, and you'll see it saying finding device, but nothing will happen yet until you plug the five volts in. And you see it says device found, please click to download. And then this next bit takes about seven minutes to download. So I'll just leave it running. Right, so that's it finished. The lights on the FTD have stopped flashing and it's just blinking on the receiver now, so you should just be able to just disconnect the power and then that's it. So I'm going to get my transmitter and just show you how to set S bus up on clean flight and that's it. Right, so this was another thing that I had an absolute nightmare with and I had to sort out. So basically, I've got an XJT module in here to communicate with the F with the X4R. Basically uh, the firmware on this was still the original firmware from Hobby King so I had to update the firmware to uh, what's it called ER9X before the S bus would work. So anyway there's already videos on YouTube so I'm not going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to quickly just show you the settings in clean flight that I've, that I've had to set up to make this work. Oh, I'll have to rebind as well because I've just I've just uh, flashed the firmware, but I'll show you how to do that in here. So if you start up, go into your menu, into your model setup, and go into protocol. So you see here we've got protocol XJT receiver number two. You have to put in a number. So I'm using two because this is model two in my radio. Select D16 channel channels 16 channels and then start binding and then just start up holding your holding your bind button and 
new flashing indicator bind. So then exit out of that. I don't know if you re need to restart your transmitter, but just restart everything. And now you've got a flashing light saying that you're connected. So now on clean flight, you can connect. Go into ports. And for this, we want to UART 3 to have serial RX selected. Then on receiver, you scroll down here and you select RX serial and then SBUS because we're using SBUS. Click save. And then you should see your throttle channel move in there. There's your yaw. There's roll and pitch, and as you can see, I'm a mode one guy. So that's it. And that literally took me 12 hours to work out how to do them two simple things. But if it saves you five minutes, it was well worth it. Right, thanks for watching this video. I think when I come back next, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to actually extend this power wire because that wire that I was using the little connectors in it aren't long enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that and then I'm going to remove these pins on here just to the pins that I need because just so it's all smaller and fits on the try a bit nicer so thanks for watching and see you for the next one